Greetings, and welcome to Roman of the Empire. I'm your host, Roman. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We will be talking about details of Spider-Man No Way Home. If you've not seen the film, get to the theater now! Or just shut off the video. Um, or if you have seen the film, or you just literally don't care, stick around. Today we're going to talk about, in depth, Spider-Man No Way Home. So, if you want the spoiler-free version of this, I made that video yesterday, look that up. This would be the spoiler-filled version. Basic plot, which we've talked about in the other video, but we're going to revisit here in case you didn't need to watch the other video. Spider-Man's identity has been exposed by Mysterio at the end of Far From Home. And this has some terrible repercussions for the people close to Peter. Uh, MJ, his best friend Ned himself, uh, none of them can get into the college they want to. Um, Happy is under criminal investigation for Stark Tech being used in the attack on London. And um, May's residence is constantly surrounded by helicopters and media and bricks are getting thrown through the window. And a lot of just <laughs> bad things are happening. They can't live a normal life. So Peter goes to Doctor Strange and asks him, hey, can you make everyone forget who that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Um, make this essentially making people forget, you know, Peter Parker. And Strange is like, this is a terrible idea. Why would you ask me to do this? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, which is my, minor plot issues, but quite honestly, the, the minor stuff is is pretty minor. You can, you can look past it. I mean, in a couple months when we look at this, we're going to go, but right now, it's it's minor enough so we can get past it. So, while Strange is casting his spell, Peter's like, Oh, gosh, there are some people I don't want to forget me. Like MJ, and Ned, and Aunt May, and Happy, and you, and the Avengers, and all the people who know before. Well, so, this totally dorks up Strange's spell. It just comes apart. And he manages to get things contained, but not before several entities, at this point he doesn't realize they're the villains, uh, have come through the multiverse. So, but he's got the rest of it contained, the spells, and he puts the spell in a, a magic box. Um, and so, Peter goes to gather up the bad guys. And so we're going to go into some major spoiler territory at this point. Uh, I'm going to go down the cast, and then we'll talk about the villains, and then we'll start going into uh, what comes next. So you have, of course, it was directed by John Watts, who did the other uh, home movies for Spider-Man. Tom Holland as Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker, uh, Zendaya as MJ, Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange, uh, Jacob Batalon as Ned, who is hilarious. Uh, Marissa Tomei as Aunt May. John Favreau as Happy Hogan. J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. And he's fantastic. Alfred Berlina as Otto Octavius. And so he and William Defoe, who is Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin. Man, those guys have aged really well. It's just impressive. I have not aged so well. I'm like 167 years old. Um, Tom Hayden as a Sandman. Jamie Foxx as Electro. Uh, Reese Ifens as Dr. Kurt Connors, the Lizard. And a secret ending, Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock, Venom. So you need to wait for after the credits to see that one. So, it's all true. Everything you've heard is true. They're all there! Um, so, Strange figures out that these villains who have crossed over were all killed by Spider-Man. And as they're telling their stories, I was about to, and then they, everything goes dark. I had Spider-Man by the throat, and then everything goes dark. And then they're here. In the moment they were about to die, 
uh, when Strange opened up the spell portal crazy shit, um, they came to our reality. Well, that reality. Tom Holland's reality. And he needs to send them back to their reality. So Peter goes out. There's some hilarity. He collects them all. And they are basically in the dungeon of the Sanctum Sanctorium. And he's got them held by magic. So, he knows he needs to send them back, but they're going to die. Well, oh, shit. Things happen. The, 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 holding the multiverse together is more important than their lives. You have to have the, the sacrifice. Peter's like, oh, buddy, I don't really, I'm not going for this. So he webs the, the magic box. The magic box is the thing that's going to send them all back. And... Peter runs off with the box, Doctor Strange follows, some crazy spell shit happens. They end up in the mirror realm, um, where Peter figures out that it's mostly just geometry, as far as the way the world moves. And he traps Doctor Strange in a web, and steals his uh, portal ring thing, and which I'm sure has a more interesting name than portal ring thing, but that's what you're getting right now. And... Leaves the mirror realm back to our world. So Doctor Strange is now trapped. He's out of the picture for pretty much the rest of the film. But you, you do see him later. So, now, Peter figures out in his mind, he's like, well, if we send them back like this, yes, they're going to they're gonna get killed. But what if, we, what if we fix them? What if we cure whatever thing makes him a lizard, him the sand dude... You batshit crazy Norman Osborn who has the two personalities, Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin. Um, Doc Ock and your arms with the bad AI that control you. So, the, and, and Electro, of course, with the, the electricity shit. Um, now, they reluctantly agree that being cured by Peter and sent back is better than send back certain death. So they're like, eh, all right, we'll 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 do it. So Doc Strange is off in the, the mirror verse, the, the mirror realm, I'm sorry. And Peter gets them all out of the dungeon. They go to Happy Hogan's secure apartment. Uh, it's a lot of security measures. It's just, it's a, it's a safe place for them to do what they need to do. So right now, Norman Osborn is sane. It is Norman Osborn in control, not the goblin. So he's helping Peter. Uh, the first one they work on is Doc Ock, how to fix Doc Ock. Well, they, Peter realizes the chip is shit. Uh, with Norman's help, they build a new one, plop it into Doc Ock. Holy shit, Doc Ock's a normal cat. Um, circle around to Electro. They figure out, okay, they develop a, a device to basically de Electro him. And you got the, the obligatory timer ticking down, lights come on, meaning. Until yeah, you know, once the last light is done, you're you're fully decharged, you're you're regular to go. So you're watching the lights tick. This is important. Now it's coming time for Norman Osborne. Well, Spidey sense tingle, tingle, shit. It's not Norman anymore, Peter. It's the Green Goblin. And hilarity ensues, he attacks everyone. Um he convinces the villains that they can just stay there in this reality, and be powerful, and not worry about dying at the hands of the spider man that they knew. And they're like, that's a fantastic idea. So Electro rips his shit off. Um, there's a device that they're using to do a lot of their uh, fabrication. It has an arc reactor on it. He grabs that shit and... Um, Green Goblin and Spider-Man are beating the crap out of each other. Aunt May is here as well. And, super spoiler alert, she gets killed. She gets killed, the building collapses, uh, Happy shows up as this is all crumbling around, he gets arrested by uh, FBI, NSA, who, who knows, it doesn't really matter, he gets arrested, arrested. And Peter scurries off, um, lost, essentially. He gives, before all this occurred, he gave MJ and Ned the box, the magic box, uh, with the instruction, basically, if I don't come back, you need to hit the button and zap all these guys back to the world. They're going to die, but, you know, it is what it is. For, for reasons I can't comprehend, they, they don't actually get to that. Um, so, 
they are staying at Ned's grandmother's house. And Ned's wearing the uh, the portal who's it from Doctor Who or Doctor Who. <laughs> Doctor Strange. And he's waving his arms around. I wish I knew where Peter was. And a portal opens and there's Spider-Man. And then he walks and oh crap, it's not our Spider-Man. It's the Andrew Garfield version of Spider-Man. And they're like, oh boy, there's more than one of them here. And they're like, well, I guess we just keep trying until we find them. Does it again, you end up with Tobey Maguire. So the Spider-Man chatted out. Um, they ask, well, where would, where would your Peter go if he needed to collect himself? So they find him sitting on top of the school. He's a freaking emotional disaster. Then uh, both Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire relay their stories of loss. Because first Peter's like, don't, don't tell me you understand. And they're like, well, you know, we, we kind of do. Um, Toby talks about Uncle Ben and Andrew Garfield talks about Gwen. And it's, it's honestly, it's, it's a very touching scene. Uh, the sense of loss from their perspectives and now Peter, who this Peter really hasn't had to deal with that kind of stuff. His, his version of existence has been very different than theirs. Uh, there is no Iron Man in their world, or at least not that they interact with. So, um... They all decide, okay, we need to figure out how to fix the, the bad guys and send them home. And Peter, Peter, our, our Peter, Tom Holland Peter, is, he's pissed. He wants to kill the Green Goblin, but to Toby's like, no, nah, we're, uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have to send him back too. Otherwise, you're, you're going to get lost. And Andrew Garfield, actually, when he was talking about what happened after Gwen died, um, he went dark. He went dark in, in, a, in a heavy way. He's like, I, I stopped pulling my punches. Punches. He, he was full of rage, and he let that consume him. Um, so he, he is one of the, the best parts of this film. But so they make up the gadgets to, to send the, to, to fix the baddies. They figure out, okay, what do we need to do? We need to bring them to a central location. How do we do that? They all want the box because they don't want them to have the box so that they can't get zapped back to their reality. So they know, yes, we need, they're going to be looking for this thing. How do we do that? They utilize J. Jonah Jameson. And so Peter, Toby, uh, <laughs> Tom calls him saying, well, hey, you know, I've got this thing. And yes, everything that happened is my fault. And basically, it's a dinner bell to the bad guys. Here I am. Come get me. So the the, the three Spider-Men are hanging out on the Statue of Liberty, which is under some kind of reconstruction. And this you get a very great interaction here between the three of them. This is a, a lighter moment um, where they realize that the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man actually shoots his webs out of him. It's not a it's not a web device. And they're kind of like, dude, what the heck? Does it come out of anywhere else? It's, it's a funny scene. And then the bad guys show up. When the three Spider-Men swing into action together, masked up on their, their webs, it is one of the most glorious shots ever. This, the theater erupted into one joyous scream. It was Fantastic. So the, the battle goes on. Um, baddies get fixed. Well, let me back up a little bit. So they're getting their asses kicked at first. Um, they realize they need to focus on one baddie at a time. And so they start doing that. Dr. Strange shows up. He comes back out. He's rightly pissed off. He's also not the Sorcerer Supreme anymore. That's Wong. In case you're curious, because Doctor Strange was gone for five years. So Wong took up the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme. This, I'm sure, will come into play later in the films, probably in Doctor Strange 2, the, the madness of the multiverse. I get it. Uh, Wong has been Sorcerer Supreme for five years. 
Uh, but is he the best and the brightest? No, it's, it's Stephen Strange. Wong's a great dude, but that's not that... I digress. Anyway, so he comes back. Um, they're still... They, they're kicking the bad guy's ass finally because they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, now, everything starts coming apart, though. Reality starts shredding as beings from all across the multiverse want to get Peter Parker. Oops. So, the fabric of reality is now coming apart, and Spider-Man, Tom Holland, is like, Sir, stop calling me that. Call me Steven. Um, what if you cast the original spell and make everybody forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man? And Strange is re reluctant to do that. He's like, but the people who love you, and he's like, I know. And this, is, this is where the theme of sacrifice comes in the movie, and it's, it's a big deal. So, Strange casts the spell, and there's, some, there's a, the goodbye scene with MJ and Ned and the other Spider-Men, and the world forgets that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. He goes, he's at Aunt May's grave, Happy shows up, Happy says, well, how did you know her? She was my aunt. Or, no, I'm sorry, he said, through Spider-Man, and Happy said, me too. He doesn't realize that Peter is Spider-Man. He goes to the donut shop where MJ works. Ned's hanging out there. And he's prepared a speech because he wants to tell them what happened. He wants them to... He wants them to remember or at least understand the events that occurred. And... They got into college. They're happy. He doesn't want to screw up their life again. So he gets a coffee and he leaves. And uh, you have J. Jonas Jameson, Spider-Man is a coward. If, if he was our true hero, he would reveal his identity. So the world has forgotten. And now we go to the final scene, Peter getting his apartment. And it's run down, not a great place. Um, he's made a new spider suit. No, no tech, just a dude in a suit. Swing off into the night. It's a glorious ending, frankly. Um, so what he doesn't have now... He doesn't have, there's no, there's no, there was no Iron Man in his world. Obviously, he's dead anyway, but he doesn't have the support of Stark Tech. Um, he doesn't have Happy. He doesn't have his friends. He doesn't have Aunt May. He is alone. And it's a new baseline for Peter Parker. And I'm excited to see what they're going to do with that. I think a lot of people are. So, I've told you an awful lot of stuff. The movie was good. It was really good. It had flaws. But they're not punch you in the face kind of flaws. They don't ruin the movie. They don't need to, you, you sit there for a minute and go, eh, okay, that's fine. And like I said, analysis of this a little bit down the road might might change, but right now, um, it's 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 a very enjoyable film. It doesn't have a lot of social justice messaging, intersectional feminism, woke bullshit. It's a movie you can just sit and watch and enjoy. Heroes get to be heroes, which is awesome. Um, and you, you come out of it feeling, uh, feeling pretty good. The, the, the big themes of this whole thing... Um, I guess the the biggest theme is uh, sacrifice, is what it ultimately comes down to. Uh, Peter sacrificed his life so that everybody else could live. Peter Parker's still alive; he's still Spider Man, obviously. But the life that he <clears throat> excuse me, the life that he knew, the life where he was, I would say, comfortable, but that life had come to a bit of a close anyway after his identity had been revealed. But he made a sacrifice for his friends and loved ones. And really the world, because everything was coming apart, even though that was kind of his fault. But before, the, the, big, the big point of it was, so his, his friends and loved ones, all of them is dead, but would have a normal life. Um, the perspective of the other Spider-Men uh, Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield were uh, were very good and helpful, and 
the three of them together, the chemistry was just amazing. It was like they'd been working together for years, even though obviously they hadn't. But you, you got that sense of brotherly attachment, and it was, it was something to behold. Um, Alfred uh, Molina is also very, very good, as both Doc Ock, and when, he, when he's normalized, he becomes uh, Otto Octavius again, and he sees Peter. Peter, my dear boy. And it did, it, it, it gets you right here. One of the strongest moments is the big battle I was discussing. If you've seen The Amazing Spider-Man, you know that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man lost his Gwen. Uh, she was falling, he couldn't get her, she died. In a similar, not same scene, um, Tom Holland's MJ is knocked off a building and he gets, the Green Goblin takes him out as he's going to rescue her, so he's unavailable. And in comes Andrew Garfield to save MJ in a way that he couldn't save Gwen. And it just punches you right in the heart. So there, there is good emotion in this movie. Um, and like I said, and, and at the end, after it all wraps up, you feel, uh, you feel pretty good coming out of it. So you have two uh, post-credit scenes. One features uh, Venom. It's not very long. It's, it's pretty good. The second is basically a long trailer for Doctor Strange 2, Madness of the Multiverse. And I'm going to be very honest here. It didn't look spectacular. Because the problem is Sony, which produced the No Way Home and all the other films, although this was the best of the three, easily, makes a better Marvel movie than Disney does at this point. We've talked about it before. Phase 4 has sucked. This movie made, on its opening night, over $90 million. It is far outpacing anything Phase 4 has done. Because people want to see this movie. Because people give a shit about Spider-Man. They like their heroes to be heroes. They don't want a bunch of people no one's ever heard of who are lecturing them. That's not fun. That's not entertainment. Anyway. That was your spoiler-filled review. Go see the movie. It's a great movie. It's a good movie. It's a very good movie. There are moments. But go see, it's super entertaining. And that's what you want. That's what I want. So, this has been Roman of the Empire. Please like and subscribe. Signing off. Be kind.